Good morning and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church here in sunny Roanoke, Virginia. It's good to have you with us today. We invite you to join with us if you already are online to go to Christ Lutheran Roanoke for the bulletin for this service this morning. If you're listening to me on the radio, then you're within a couple blocks and it's good to have you here with us this morning. A few announcements. A uh, church office will be closed Monday and Tuesday for the holiday. That includes Bible study, uh, no Bible study this uh, Monday. We encourage you to pick up your summer bingo card at the church or print it from the newsletter and play along all throughout the summer. It's a fun way of being connected, sharing pictures on Facebook and Instagram, and you bring your completed or partial completed card to the bingo party on August 27th at 10 a.m. for prizes, food, fellowship, and more bingo. July 15th at 6.05 at the Salem Red Sox Stadium. Come and join us for Lutheran Night. All you need to do is go to the box office, tell them you're a Lutheran, and the tickets are specially priced at $10 or less, and they'll be there for you. You don't have to call ahead of time. Join us for that. Pastor Cindy, again, is so excited because it's also Margarita Night at the Red Sox. You, I mean, yeah, seriously, it is. It really is. Uh, throughout the summer, the Evangelism Committee invites you all to take some intentional time to reflect together on how Christ Lutheran can build on our strengths to better serve the love of God in Roanoke and the world. Check your emails and the bulletin insert for dates and times to meet and discuss this very question. All questions, contact Pastor Cindy, but to your right on the board, if you see those dates and say, oh, I'm available that day, come and join us for a conversation as we seek to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And again, thank you to everyone who volunteered and participated in our Journey Together VBS last weekend. We had a wonderful time had by all 65 participants, and it was so fun because we really did. We had uh, one person as young as one, and one person as old as 104. It was a great multi-generational event. We learned, sang, ate, created, and shared our faith together. Other announcements are found before you, and we invite you to now uh, be a part of our worship on page one of our worship bulletin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of all our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy, for you are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading is from Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, verses 5 through 9. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If we have any kids that would like to come forward, you are welcome to do that. Or regardless of your age, if you'd like to see the pictures in my book, you are welcome to come closer. If you are watching at home, come closer to your screen. We're going to hear Jesus say in just a few minutes from Pastor Dave, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. Whoever welcomes us, welcomes Jesus. What a gift. What a gift to be welcome. So I brought a book this morning called The Big Umbrella, which if you notice a crick in my husband's neck today, it's because he was literally crawling on the floor at the Roanoke Library yesterday to find this book for me. So if that's not Jesus love, I don't know what is. The Big Umbrella by Amy June Bates, co-written with Juniper Bates. By the front door, there is an umbrella. It is big. It is a big, friendly umbrella. It likes to help. It likes to spread its arms wide. It loves to give shelter. It loves to gather people in. It doesn't matter if you are tall or hairy or plaid. It doesn't matter how many legs you have. Some people worry that there won't be enough room under the big umbrella. But the amazing thing is there he is. It just keeps getting bigger. There is always room. That umbrella is just like the church. There's always room. And what a gift for us to remember that. To remember that not only when we're here, but every day. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for welcoming us into your love, and we pray that you would help us to love one another. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. 
Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, o Christ. So the great mystery is finally solved for weeks in our confession. We have referred to God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. Now, some people were questioning this, going, what is that about? And, and some people even rejected this idea of God being cold water. But today, the mystery is solved. It comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 10th chapter, the 42nd verse. Whoever gives one of the little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, truly I tell you, he will by no means lose his reward. And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you surely will be rewarded. Water. Water. Cool. Clear. Water. Reflects a bit on that great philosophy from 1941 that we first heard on March 27th on Decca Record from the Sons of the Pioneers. All day I face the barren waste without the taste of water, cool water. Old Dan and I, with throats burned dry and souls that cry for water, cool, clear water. Keep a moving, Dan. Don't you listen to him, Dan. He's a devil of a man, and he spreads the burning sand with water. Dan, can you see that big green tree where the water's running free, and it's waiting there for you and me? The nights are cool, and I'm a fool. Each store is a pool of water, cool water. But with the dawn, I'll wake and yawn and carry on to water, cool, clear water. Words of inspiration that comes to us from the Sons of the Pioneer were used in many, many films and other recording artists. But the concept of cool, clear water in the midst of a parched desert. It's like an oasis that you see beckoning you forward to give you relief and strength and maybe even sustain your life. And in today's gospel lesson, Jesus takes the simple lesson of sharing water as being transformative and restorative and enduring in our time of thirst. Now most of us don't know what true thirst is because we have normally within our grasp, around the corner, in the cooler, from the tap, water, cool, clear water. But what's the importance of water? Now we're told by Doctors, that 75% of our body is water. So I don't know about you, but that's a, it's a big part of me. So, you see, I'm not overweight. I'm just over water. Well, the reality is that cooled water, cold water, what it does chemically and biochemically and physically, it strains your body because it makes you go into survival mode, working hard to maintain your core temperature. So when you drink cold water, it stimulates your body to increase blood flow or circulation. It increases the circulation, it distributes the blood and delivers freshly oxygenated blood to stress 
those air to restress those areas of the body that need to recover. So you see, it's not just in your head that when you drink cold water on a parched day, it's like a breath of fresh air. It rejuvenates you. Many years ago, when we took a group of kids down to New Orleans the summer after Katrina, we encouraged them while we were working outside. And I know you might say, Pastor, that was the dumbest idea you ever had. We went the first week of July to New Orleans. It was the only time we could make it happen. Yes, it was awfully hot. Well, one day, we were mucking out houses. That was the term used to, to clean out a house. I mean, to gut it. Uh, walls, ceiling, floors, everything, appliances, everything out of the house to get down to bare, bare studs and bare wood so that it could be treated for mold and mildew. And it was a very hot day. We started at 6 in the morning to try to avoid the midday heat. Well, that one day, we had to, because we were in this house that had been uh, untouched for, for many months, we had to wear hazmat suits. So we had boots, we had gloves, we had respirators, we had helmets. We had protection from the elements, which just nicely increased the impact of the heat and the humidity. And in one six-hour shift, luckily, we had plenty of water. And I drank 14 16 ounce bottles of water in that six hour period. And I don't want to get too technical, but I did not need to visit the restroom the entire day. Why? Because it was in my boots. It was that hot and humid. But boy, those half hour water breaks gave us recharging of our inner batteries. It sustained us, it refreshed us, it gave us the energy we needed to do God's work in a hot, sweltering July heat in New Orleans, Louisiana. Now, one of our kids was resistant to drink the water. Pastor Dave, I only drink Dasani, she kept saying. I said, that's great, but you're going to drink this water because you need it. Now, I'll wait till we get back. I said, I'll tell you what, if you drop dead, I'm just going to bury you here. Drink your water. And she begrudgingly did. And she lived. And she's still alive today because of that water. But you see, when we are so, so focused on our thirst, that's all we can think of. Cool, clear water. How does God quench your thirst. In John 7, Jesus is, says these words. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. We are always in need of replenishment. We are always in need of God. If we're truthful with ourselves, we are a thirsty people. Because we need that refreshing living water of God within us, flowing from our heart, flowing into our bodies, giving us the strength and the energy we need to be the children of God. Sometimes we allow our thirst to overcome us. And if you've ever been dehydrated, I can tell you from personal experience, it's not a nice feeling. Your body aches, your heart races, you feel faint and sometimes you do faint. And you just can't do much of anything without replenishing the water you need. Folks, it's no different for our spiritual lives as well. We need God. 
Not just, not just in, a, in an intellectual understanding of who God is, but in an emotional and spiritual reality that God needs to be in us. That we need to be replenished and restored with God's presence and grace and mercy and love. If not daily, hour by hour, and sometimes minute by minute. Filling your cup means replenishing your spiritual, your mental, and your emotional and physical essence. It, it means stopping and recharging your, your batteries. It means giving yourself permission to rest, to be restored and refreshed. And it's easy to overlook and neglect your need to do that. Sometimes we just trudge through when we're in the midst of a crisis or needing to help people. And, and we put aside our own needs for the sake of others. That's a very altruistic way of looking at life. But the more we deplenish our reserves, the less we can function as we move forward. So everyone needs to recharge, to refill, and to replenish that which allows us to take each step with God on our faith journey. So fill your cup. Don't be embarrassed to say, you know, I'm kind of thirsty for God. I need to take some time and replenish it. Pastors are bad about that. You can ask Dave Delaney on the Senate staff about encountering pastors and who, who are completely dry, worn out. And it's not to extol the virtues of a, a minister, but it's to tell you that even those of us who you think would know better can often forget what it means to be refreshed and recharged. Well, I'll get to that eventually. Clergy burnout is great. It's, it's really great within the first 10 years of ministry. A lot of denominations see a 50% attrition rate in new ministers within the first 10 years. They get to the point where it's just too much for them. They're over, overworked, under replenished. Forget that as spiritual leaders, we need to lead by caring for our own spirit. Now, I'm not telling you this to, to earn favors or you to feel sorry for you, but the reality is this. Until we as leaders of the church, as, as disciples of Christ, until we recognize our daily need for that replenishing water that quenches our eternal thirst, then we won't function well or long. It's just a matter of time. It's like when the steward at, in, the, in the plane gives you that instructions that in the case of cabin depressuration or oxygen depletion, uh, from, the, from the above you will be dropped a, an oxygen mask, put it on first, Deal with others later because if you don't put it on, you're going to be worthless to anyone else around you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Be refreshed in the presence and the love of God. Fill your cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Because when we don't, we wear ourselves down. And even in the, even in the distribution of, of H2O, we have to recognize the limitations of getting it, sharing it, and taking it along with us. <clears throat> Who could guess how much a five gallon bucket of water weighs? Anybody? It's over 44 pounds. Okay, five gallon bucket. But did you know that the average distance that someone in a developing community walks to fetch even a gallon of water is 3.75 miles each way. 
Can you imagine that? A seven mile trip that you probably have to walk with and then come back carrying whatever water you can. And again, you see those women taking and then taking five gallon jugs of water. Each one of those is just under 50 pounds of weight. And then walking back that four mile journey in the hot sun to bring water to your child who is thirsty. We have today great need to improve the ability of people throughout the world to get enough water to live, to thrive, and to be sustained. So anytime you see someone asking you to help get some water, do it, whatever it takes. And remind them as you share with them that cool, clear water that anyone who thirsts can come to come and drink and have the river, rivers of flowing, living water flow. Keep yourselves hydrated, is what they say. Keep yourselves hydrated with H2O and with GO. May God bless you as you seek to do God's work, to share God's love. Let you be filled to the point of overflowing. And may the living water, living water, sustain you and all people in the name of Christ. Amen.
of mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for creation, for the Roanoke River and for local creeks and ponds and lakes, for all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, or wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions. God, in your mercy, hear, hear God, our prayer. prayer. We pray for this nation and all nations, for our governor and president, for our Congress, for presidents, governors, legislators throughout our land, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated. Guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for those who are ill. We pray today especially for Mary, for Lawana and her family, for Keeley, Abby, Phyllis, Eleanor, for the family of Claire and the family of Lucia, for all those we name before you now in our hearts. For any near death, and for all who grieve, God, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Yeah. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in childcare settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, childcare workers and teachers, coaches, counselors and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists, God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those around you, both in person and online. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his acts of healing, his body given up and his victory over death, 
We await that day when all the peoples of earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. Thanks be to God. If you are online or if you are communing in your car, you are welcome to take the bread and the wine now. If you would like to come forward, uh, Pastor Dave and I will meet you down at the curb. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest sea, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen.